lecture is clinical anatomy of the brain. You see, brain consists of two cerebral hemispheres. And these two cerebral hemispheres, they form what you call large brain. That means we have another one known as small brain. That is the cerebellum. We'll discuss that aside. But today my discussion is clinical anatomy of the brain. And I'm going to take part of the larger brain and discuss. Each of the cerebral hemispheres now is made up of lobes, about six lobes. On the superior lateral surface of each of the cerebral hemisphere, you are going to see the frontal lobe, parietal lobe, temporal lobe, and occipital lobe. So this is frontal lobe here, this is parietal lobe here, this is temporal, and this is occipital. What is demarcating frontal lobe from parietal lobe is what we call central sulcus. So this is the central sulcus, demarcating frontal lobe from parietal lobe. So also you have a lateral fissure that demarcates the frontal lobe from temporal lobe that is lying below. So it means that the frontal lobe lies anterior to the parietal lobe and superior to the temporal lobe. This frontal lobe is being enclosed by the frontal bones. You understand? So they are in the front. So we have three horizontal gyri known as superior frontal gyrus, middle frontal gyrus, and inferior frontal gyrus. These are demarcated by what you call superior frontal sulcus and inferior frontal sulcus. These are the two sulci that divides this frontal lobe into three horizontal gyri. We also have what is what we call precentral gyrus. This precentral pre gyrus contains or is the area for the primary motor area. Anterior to this primary motor cortex or area that houses what we call the premotor cortex or premotor area. So just below these two areas, there's also another important area, what you call Barocca's area of speech. So you can see that we have so many areas. This is Barocca's area of speech. So anything that is lying anterior to this premotor cortex here, that means on this uh, superior, middle, and inferior frontal gyri, this large chunk of the area is what you call a prefrontal area. So each of these areas has its own function or functions. So now, the functions of the prefrontal cortex, which is this one, or prefrontal area, these are the ones. So the prefrontal cortex is responsible for decision making. That means if you want to make a decision, maybe to be a medical doctor or to be an engineer, when you decide to marry this year or maybe next year, these are all decisions. So prefrontal cortex here is responsible for you to decide in your own life. Similarly, if you want to solve a problem, like maybe your wife, you know, is bringing you trouble, and so you want to maybe convey this information to her parents to solve that problem. Now you are trying to solve your own problem by initiation, reconciliation between you and your wife. Or maybe you have a problem of not having money. And so you think of how to get the money. So you get the money so that you have solved your problem. So prefrontal cortex is responsible for problem solving. Similarly, personality, the way you show yourself to the society. That means, for example, now, the way you talk, the way you behave, the way you interact socially, these are all what we refer to as personality, or the way you appear to people. All these are part of the personality. You know, so prefrontal cortex is also uh, responsible for that. Also, emotions, expression of emotions, Probably maybe if I tell you your 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 
your husband you know is dead or your friend is dead you are not going to laugh you are going to show in your face that you are not happy of his death that is emotion or if i say okay i'm going to give you a very brand new car you are going to smile and you know or you laugh or you you show expression that you are you know you are happy all these are part of the emotions and these are part of the functions of the prefrontal you know lobe you know or area similarly attention as you are now sitting down in this class you are giving me your own attention for the lecture i'm giving you otherwise if your attention is not with me you will not be able to understand what i'm telling you so attention is also part of the function of the prefrontal cortex similarly concentration you concentrate on what you are doing you are not distracted so attention and concentration are virtually you know they are similar or the same so to say and then the recent memory for example now i ask you what has happened yesterday or last month or last year all these are part of the recent memories but if i ask you what has happened 10 20 years back you know that is not the function of the prefrontal area that is the function of other areas which we will discuss later on but recent memory is part of the functions of the prefrontal area thinking if you think of maybe uh going to hajj this year or maybe you think of getting out of this class thinking process you know is also part of the function of so these are the functions of the prefrontal cortex which is part of the frontal lobe as i told you before that we have premotor cortex that is lying directly anterior to the primary motor cortex the function of that area is planning and initiation of motor movement for example now you are just sitting down and you think in your mind that you want to stand up and go for biochemistry text test or lecture so you are already plan in your mind that you want to stand up so that standing up is just not is, is not just like that so you have to start initiating the movement so planning and initiation of your voluntary motor movement is the function of the premotor cortex but the execution of the movement when you start to work in that is the function of the motor cortex that is the primary motor area so and the last one the broca's area of speech is responsible for the speaking you know i'm doing now. i i i I'm, I'm i'm talking to you and you are understanding what i'm saying and I, if i ask you questions you know you will be able to answer me by replying me so the ability of one to speak about what is in his or her own mind is the function of the broca's area which is this one and this one is lying inside the inferior frontal gyrus just below the prefrontal cortex and so now whatever happens with this frontal lobe it is going to affect everything here so now what are the causes of the causes of frontal lobe lesion or injuries so frontal lobe injuries can result from trauma that means as a result of accident somebody may have an accident for example somebody is just accelerating in a very high speed in a car suddenly something comes towards he is or her own way and he suddenly matches brake by the time he does that the head is going to bang on the dashboard or on the windscreen the the, the 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 skin of the car and what have you or maybe during this head on collision you know so the head is going to be banged on the dashboard or on anything in the front and so that can fracture the frontal bones and can damage the frontal lobe or the frontal cortex similarly apart from the trauma tumor that is cancer of the brain can also affect the frontal lobe not only is that infection like the meningitis you know we tend to have some outbreaks of meningitis in our own you know uh, periods most of the time you know we tend to have such so meningitis can also cause you know the you know the the, the injury or lesion of the frontal lobe similarly uh 
apart from these uh, uh, things that I said, gunshot, which is also part of the trauma, gunshot like during war, somebody may be shot on the head and the bullet can go in, into any of these places and interfere with that place. Or maybe knife injury, you get it during end of a fight. All these are part of the trauma injury. Or somebody may fall down from height. Maybe he falls or she falls with the frontal part of the head on the floor, and that can also affect the frontal lobe. So these are all the various causes or ways by which somebody can have injury or lesion to the frontal lobe. Now, what are the features of the frontal lobe lesion or damage as a result of any of this? So you see, if the frontal, if the prefrontal cortex, this area is the only one that is affected. That means everything here is going to be affected. That means if you see a person is not able to make any decision, you ask him to decide between wrong and the right. He doesn't know how to decide. Or you give him a simple problem to solve. Or he doesn't know how to solve his own problem. Or he, 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 if you look at him, he's not fully you know, dressed and he doesn't behave well. That means his personality is... So he, he or she may have personality disorder. He cannot solve his own problem. He cannot decide. He, he, he doesn't have any emotion. When you tell him you are going to give him money, he is not going to show any expression in his face. When you tell him his father is dead, probably he's not going to show any sign of remorse or you know, emotion that he's not happy about the death or whatever. Similarly, if you are talking to him, his attention is not there. If you are talking to him, his concentration is not with you. Or maybe you ask him to think of what happens if he has this and that. He cannot think by himself. This person, if he or she has this, that means he has frontal, prefrontal lobe lesion or damage. Similarly, if there is a damage to this premotor cortex, that means there will be no planning and initiation of motor movement, talkless of the execution of that motor movement. If the two are affected, that means planning, initiation, and execution of the voluntary motor movement is no longer there, then that person is going to have what we call upper motor neuron legend. So we have upper motor neuron legend. So upper motor neuron legend is as a result of these neurons. You know, the cerebral cortex, all along this lateral surface of each of the cerebral hemispheres, the cell bodies, you know, the axons are the ones that pass down into the brain stem. You get it, they now descend down into the spinal cord before it finally synapses with the anterior horn cells in the spinal cord. That is the second neuron that goes into the muscles of our own body. So this neuron here, if you have damage of these areas, so you are having damage to the upper motor neuron. So I will have a break now. Next lecture, I'm going to discuss about upper motor neuron lesion, and probably I can, I'm going to combine it with a lower motor neuron lesion to you know, appreciate the difference between the two lesions. So I'm going to break here.